I am Dr. Kumar, one of the authors of this manuscript, Oxygen Resuscitation and Oxidative Stress Biomarkers in Premature Infants. Resuscitation of premature infants less than 32 week gestation often requires administration of oxygen. However, antioxidant defense mechanisms against high levels of oxygen exposure are induced late in gestation and these infants are not ready to face the challenge of oxidant stress from relative hyperoxia leading to bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Resuscitation of premature infants with reduced oxygen concentration results in lower systemic oxidant stress and lower incidence of BPD. In the current study, we tested the hypothesis that limiting oxygen exposure at resuscitation in premature infants would decrease systemic oxidative stress as assessed by reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione ratio, plasma nitrotyrosine and 8-hydrodeoxyguanosine at 24 hours, 1 week and 4 weeks of age. This was a prospective double-blind randomized control trial of administration of three specific oxygen concentrations of 21%, 40% or 100% oxygen at birth in infants less than 32 weeks gestation. Both the FiO2 concentration and the SpO2 recordings were blinded initially and unmasked at 10 minutes of age. We could enroll only 18 infants during the study because of implementation of 2010 NRP guidelines. NRP upper and lower saturation limits are superimposed on the SpO2 curves of the three oxygen resuscitated groups. Resuscitation of premature infants with 100% O2 as shown in red resulted in SpO2 values above the upper limit of the 2010 guidelines in the first 10 minutes after birth. The 40% O2 resuscitated group as shown in blue had SpO2 values below the NRP lower limit in the first 5 minutes and within the range by 6 to 10 minutes of age. Similarly, 21% O2 resuscitated group as shown by the green line had mean SpO2 values bordering the NRP lower limit in the first 5 minutes and within the NRP defined SpO2 target range from 6 to 10 minutes. However, our numbers were small to make any definite conclusions. Despite aggressive weaning, FiO2 was significantly higher in the 100% O2 group to maintain the target SpO2 until 30 minutes of age. There was no significant difference in FiO2 between 40% O2 and 21% O2 groups during the weaning process. GSH-GSSG ratio was significantly lower at 24 hours in the 100% O2 group compared with 21% O2 and 40% O2 groups, suggesting higher oxidative stress in this group. The ratio was not different among the groups at 1 week or at 4 weeks of age. Plasma nitrotyrosine, a marker of peroxynitrate formation, was higher in the two oxygen resuscitated groups over time. Also, 100% O2 group had higher nitrotyrosine compared to the other two groups at 24 hours. 8-hydrodeoxyguanosine levels were similar at 24 hours and at 4 weeks among the groups. However, 8-OHDG levels were significantly higher at 4 weeks compared to 24 hours among the groups. To conclude, we have defined the natural evolution of SpO2 in the first 10 minutes of life with exposure to three different concentrations of oxygen. Randomization to higher FiO2 led to higher total oxygen exposure at resuscitation and this was significantly correlated with markers of systemic oxidant stress. Although multiple studies have addressed issues involving oxygen at resuscitation, the novelty of our study was in keeping the oxygen concentrations constant at resuscitation. Thank you.